What up, y'all? It's your boy, Sid Linus, checking in once again. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that cash app. Uh, We're going to go ahead and just jump right into this video. Uh, This is about uh, Representative Byron Donalds, um, a black man uh, that's in Congress from Florida, and he's also on the short list of Donald Trump vice presidential uh, candidates or whatever. So he's on the short list. And uh, he made big news because he was actually talking about black families and black families being together during the Jim Crow era. And it looks like it's turning back around to where black families are starting to be together. Black people are starting to get married younger and black people are starting to have a little bit more conservative thought like they always had even, even back in the Jim Crow era. And a lot of people took his comments as if he were saying that black people were better off during Jim Crow, which never came out of his mouth. So he's had to do all these different damage control uh, interviews because people are going around saying that he said that um, black people had it better under Jim Crow. So let's go ahead and and, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to watch the video of um, Byron Donalds actually you know, talking to his constituents and talking to people and talking about black family and his situation growing up. We'll go ahead, go to it right now. With my mom, my dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened, but you my father and I love you. Wow. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm gonna tell you this, coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to myself. And so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the the reinvigoration of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then, H-E-W, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I say it because it's my contemporaries as well as his contemporaries, you're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. It's when you home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, now wait a minute, time out. This does not look right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Not just having a job. Generational wealth. All right. So, and, and, and when he talked about black families being together during Jim Crow, black pe- black families have always been together and fought to be, to, get, to be together during the worst times in American history. We understood the importance of being together. And it's as of late that it seems like that we we think it is more beneficial to not have a man in the household or to not be married or to get you know you get the benefits if a man is not in the home um and so those are the things we have to fight off we have to fight to be together and 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 get back to being black families and get back to owning homes my grandparents they all own homes um and in multiple homes at that so um but you see how he was talking and everybody in that room understood what he was saying. But then you got CNN to put their hands on it. You had MSNBC with Joy Reid, she put her hands on it. And they want to flip it to him saying that black people had it better under Jim Crow. So and even though they can admit that they didn't verbally come out of his mouth, they want to flip it and switch it and tell the American people that's what he meant. And then he has to go around and do a lot of damage control. But Hakeem Jeffries spoke about it on Congress floor. And do you think Hakeem Jeffries, uh, um, oh, Byron Donald's an, 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 um, an apology. 
because he totally, he t see nowadays, you can say a person said a thing and a person can say, well, I didn't say that. And then you could come back with, well, I'm not going to apologize to you for misquoting you because I still believe that's what you meant. And that's what they're trying to do right now. Look at Hakeem Jeffries on the uh, Congress floor. So-called leader has made the factually inaccurate statement that black folks were better off during Jim Crow. That's an outlandish, outrageous, and out-of-pocket observation. We were not better off when a young boy named Emmett Till could be brutally murdered without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when black women could be sexually assaulted without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be systematically lynched without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when children could be denied a high quality education without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be denied the right to vote without consequence because of Jim Crow. How dare you make such an ignorant observation? You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. I yield back. All right, so there you have Hakeem Jeffries, a Democrat, uh, pretty much misquoting uh, Byron Donalds. And you know, it's just a Democrat-Republican fight. He's gonna misquote him. Byron Donalds never said that black people had it better under Jim Crow. He just said that black people were married under Jim Crow and black people had conservative thought, conservative values. And we see his working his way back to more black families being together. Now, let's see if he's wrong. Now, see, we can, we can look up and see if he's wrong. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up uh, some stats to show you that what Byron Donald was saying was true. Let's look at, I think we all can agree that it's better to be married and raise children in a married home in a married environment with a mother and father. We can all agree, agree with that, right? So on that aspect, black families were better, uh, black, black families were together in an environment where they could raise their kids much better being in a home. Now I understand there was a lot of outside issues during Jim Crow that made it worse for black people during that era. But as far as black people in the home and the way they raise their kids, I feel like marriage, being married is much better with raising kids than not being married. So let's look at the, uh, the report right here. It says, there are distinctive racial patterns in the changing attitude and behaviors related to marriage and family. Marriage rates have fallen among whites, blacks, Hispanics over the past 50 years, but the drop has been most pronounced among blacks. In 1960, 61% of black adults were married. By 2008, that share had dropped to 32%. Among whites, the marriage rate, rate dropped from 74% in 1960 to 56% in 2008. The trend in marriage rates among Hispanics has tracked more closely with that of whites. In 2008, 50% of Hispanic adults were married. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It says blacks are more likely than whites to agree that marriage is becoming obsolete. However, unmarried blacks are just as likely as unmarried whites to say they would like to get married in the future. Okay. So you see that it, it, since the 1960s, it has dropped from 61%. To 32 percent, right? I, we could all agree that that's not a good thing for the black community, right? Okay. Now, when we talk about marriage, we also talk about income, two income households, which leads to a middle class. And let's look at the wealth gap. Let's look at the wealth gap from the 1960s, and then we're gonna look at the wealth gap uh, uh, now. But let's let's here we go. Now let's talk about race. In 2013, the average wealth Remember, that could include the value of a home of African-American families was 95000 For Hispanics, it was 112000 The average wealth of white families was 500000 greater than it was for African-American or Hispanic families. In 1963, the average white family wealth exceeded that of African-American and Hispanic families by only 117000 So the wealth gap went from 117000 in the 60s to over 500,000 to today.
Okay, so the wealth gap is way wider than it was during the 60s. So my point in this video is that number one, y'all misquoted Byron Donalds on purpose because y'all trying to derail any type of political uh, uh, um, uh, achievements, vision, anything, and try to make it seem like that if he does get picked by Donald Trump to be the vice president, that he is somehow a black guy who uh, is racist and doesn't understand racial dynamics in America. That's number one. And number two, you guys are trying to come at it like, like uh, marriage is it uh, doesn't mean anything or that marriage is not something to say, hey, we were married a lot back then. Let's get back to being married again. Y'all looking at that like like marriage, y'all want to disrupt the, uh, uh, the institution of marriage. You're not going to disrupt the institution of marriage. Marriage uh, uh, correlates directly with economics in most cases. If you are single and raising kids, and you are married raising kids, uh, most times, if both parents are working and both parents, both parents are bringing in income, you are going to do better economically. You're going to be more in the middle class. And it directly shows in the 60s, we were married more and the wealth gap was less. We were less married in the 2000s and the wealth gap was wider in the 2000s. That's just how you have it. So Byron Donalds wasn't saying that black, black families had it better under Jim Crow. He just said, let's get back to being married and let's get and let's get back to raising our kids and let's get back to having an income so we can crush this wealth gap and bring more money in and have generational wealth for our families and not just a job. Y'all keep God first and I'm going to keep making these videos. All right, peace.